uh, I mean, the very first thing you do is craft a recipe. Yeah. yeah. So you build the recipe on your account. Um, you can actually get some pretty good ideas of what the recipe is going to end up like using our recipe right, crafter. Right, right. Um, then when you have all the grains and hops and the ingredients and you're ready to go, the first thing you do is fill this keg with water. Snap on the ball lock posts. Take this step filter, fill part of it with grains and part of it with hops. There's four separate hop compartments. Those are all the way in the back. Slide it into the machine. The machine is internet connected, so it's synchronized to your account. The account that you crafted on your computer is already here as soon as you turn the machine on. You select that and you say brew and... With recipe in the... Or with the... What is the computer directing it to do? Uh, to your account on peekabrew.com. All right. But you have, you have to... Is it kind of instructing it or kind of monitoring it? What, what is the... I mean, it's just the computer and interacting with the account. What's it doing? You mean how does it synchronize? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right now, it's, as soon as you say brew a recipe, it just synchronizes yeah. to make sure that nothing has changed on your account. And then yeah. if, if something has, it it pulls down whatever it has. Um, and, so, and, and so what what's on your account is temperature and time and that kind of, those kinds of variables. And then it just tells the machine what to do. Well, behind the scenes, what really happens is uh, when you're crafting a recipe, which we'll go through over here, uh, you are creating a beer XML. So there is XML for beer, <laughs> beer recipes. Sure yeah. um, so you're crafting a beer XML recipe. And so that has everything from, you know, the types of grains, where the sources of the grains, to the types of hops, to the mash steps, um, and then all the on through fermentation. So a full XML description of the beer that you're going to brew. Um, and we are beer XML compatible, so you can import recipes from the web as well and uh, scale them to our two and a half gallon batches, two and a half gallon size batches. Um, the beer XML program gets pulled over to our machine in the synchronization, and uh, internally, we, our firmware converts it into a control program. Uh, the control program is doing things like monitoring temperature. Uh, there's three different pumps in the machine, so it's turning on and off pumps and controlling pumps, and also um, controlling the heater, obviously. Um, so, you know, heating water, and uh, monitoring overflow conditions and things like that, too, to make sure that you don't have any drain backups or anything like that. So monitoring the safety and health of the system. And uh, so basic operation of the system, once you've got the ingredients loaded, and the water loaded here is that the, one of the pumps in the base unit of the machine pulls water from the keg down into the base unit. It goes through a heat exchanger loop, which I can show you. We probably have a deep, uh, an open machine somewhere. The heat exchanger loop is uh, allowing you to have indirect heat source, so you don't get caramelization of the of the beer. It's uh, it's a little nicer to be able to heat it indirectly. So we've got a plate heat exchanger on a glycol loop and the, the half that is the food grade half of that uh, beer, beer work passes through that. Initially the water passes through that, gets heated. It's pumped up out through a fluid arm, which I can, you can sort of, well, you can't really see here, I can show you on this machine. Um, yeah, so it's a stepper going. motor controlled fluid arm. That's what this belt goes to, a stepper. The fluid goes up here. And what that allows us to do is deposit the fluid into certain different compartments here at different times in the brewing process. Initially, it's going to be routed through a pass-through because all we're trying to do is heat the fluid. We're not, we're not wetting any of the ingredients. We're heating up the fluid to mash temperature. So there's a sort of a fast loop where it's just going through the heater loop, pouring down into the drain in the compartment, getting pumped back through the keg, and around and around we go as it's heating the fluid. Once you hit mash temperature, then the fluid arm moves over into the drain compartment, and here we are mashing right now. So it's moving the fluid through much more slowly because most of the art of the mash is actually just steeping the grain. But we're trying to steep the grain and hold a constant temperature within less than half a degree. And so to hold that precise temperature, you've got to sort of keep going through the heat exchanger to make sure you're keeping that uniform temperature going. It's a PID controlled loop, by the way, which is how we super precisely maintain temperature. At the end of the 
mash, we will heat to boil. And so again, the fluid arm moves over this pass-through compartment, and then we're just cycling the fluid around and around through a pass loop, heating up to boil. You can control what boil temperature you, you want to boil at, um, because there's actually nothing magic about 212. You can boil at 207. They sort of have slightly different results with okay. summarization at different temperatures, but we allow you to control that as well. Um, and then the magic really happens as uh, in, in conventional brewing, you're sort of timing the boil and adding in hops. So you add in hops typically at the very beginning. That's going to be sitting in the bottom of your boil or floating around in your boil for the whole time to impart bitterness. Um, you sort of lose the other properties that the hops can impart if you're sitting there boiling it for an hour. Because hops really can give you three things. They can give you bitterness, they can give you aroma, and they can give you flavor. Uh, you sort of lose the volatiles for the aroma and flavor if you let it sit there for an hour, but you get a lot of bitterness. So typically a beer will have potentially three or four additions. Uh, one for one that's in there most of the time for the bitterness. A, typically a different type of hop uh, for some flavors. And then some hops at the very end for aroma. And with these hops additions, that's one of the sort of the critical parts of conventional homebrewing, you're sitting around timing and then tossing hops in. Um, and if you're making something like a dogfish head 90 minute IPA, one of the big 